Um, hello, in this video I'm going to talk about um, different kind of pointers or let's say references. Let's just say pointers because it's a more general term, especially in um, systems programming languages. So I'm going to talk about the different kinds of pointers that are in Rust. So let's start with, um, with just talking about what is a pointer in general. So a pointer is just a variable, basically, um, that holds a memory address inside, and that memory address is um, pointing to some data. So you have an integer, it's placed somewhere inside your memory, inside your RAM, so that there is, a, and it has an exact location on, on the RAM. So if you take the reference, if you take the location of that integer, and put it inside another variable, that variable is a pointer. So, pointer is a simple term, simple, um, simple concept, inside in the, and it is easy to understand. But C++ came and introduced a really good, um, uh, another concept that was built upon the pointer, and that was a smart pointer. So if you have ever used C, you know that um, for arrays, for strings, um, for basically anything that could um, that could not fit in just one memory address, you m might use references, or in situations that you need um, to pass um, to 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 not copy whole data and just pass a reference to it, you need a pointer. So imagine you have a really big struct or a really, really big array. You don't want it to be copied any every time you pass it into a function. So you just want to pass a reference to it, so you just copy the pointer of your memory, which is many times smaller uh, in the size than the original data. So there was this concept, but it was a bit hard to use because, for example, arrays, you needed to know what's the size of each um, element in the array. And if you want to jump to the next um, element, you needed to just um, manually um, increment the pointer by the size of, for example, if, a, if we imagine an integer is a 4 byte, we needed to just jump 4 bytes. So that was a bit um, painful. So C++ came and introduced the concept, uh, concept of smart pointers. So what is a smart pointer? Um, smart pointer is basically a pointer to some, it has all the definitions, but also, it has um, it has some metadata and some capabilities, some um, behaviors attached to it. So, for example, in C++ and also in Rust, um, strings are smart pointers. Um, vectors in both are smart pointers. So, so basically, the smart pointer is just a pointer with um, with some capabilities. And we, we are going to talk about different pointers or different smart pointers in Rust. But before we go further, we need to know that in Rust, to define a smart pointer, we need to have two traits implemented. One trait is DREF and the other one is DROP. And basically every smart pointer in Rust a standard library and third party libraries is implementing these two. So. What is DREF trait? DREF trait allows you to define the behavior you want the compiler and the language do for you when a user using that uh, smart pointer of yours um, to see. So, for example, in inside in in a vector, you want to you want your smart pointer. So when when a so when your vector is accessed by an index, you want your smart pointer to exactly know where to jump. So internally, it calls the DREF trait to, to get to the first place on the memory for of, the, of the vector and then jump to the appropriate index. The drop trait is, or imagine uh, for a simpler um, explanation, Imagine you have an integer and you have a smart pointer that only has integers inside. Or even the even the more known 
example of this is box type. So in Rust, there is a box that you can allocate data on heap and get a pointer to it. So when you use a box, you want the compiler to act to use it just like the normal value. You want to have the most of the normal um, methods and stuff available to you. So the DREF trait basically um, gets the data from the heap and gives you to uh, give it to you when it's, a, it's appropriate. For example, when you do dot on it. So the drop trait is a trait for when, um, wh when this smart pointer goes out of scope. What happens? What happens to the in inner data? These, these behaviors are defined in the drop trait. So for example, in case of box, it's probably, okay, ju just go and call the drop trait on the inner data to destroy the inner data in the box. So let's um, talk about different pointers. So we all now know what smart pointers are in Rust. So let's um, see some of them. So references are uh, different pointers, not smart pointers. So references are the most common pointer type in Rust. They're using with, uh, they are created using um, ampersand um, character, and they borrow the value they point to. They can be mutable and immutable as well. So str and these are the most common ones. You've probably seen them if you have programmed in Rust. Strings are smart pointers, which are basically vectors, nothing fancy. Um, a string, if you go inside the source code, you see that string is just a, uh, just a, just a, just is a struct that just has a vector inside it. So what is a vector? Vector is a smart pointer, which is a growable array. It's a contiguous um, memory space and it can grow and you have so many um, capabilities attached to it since it's a smart pointer. So you have methods like push, you have methods like len, you, can, you have so many methods for a vector. You can turn it into, inside, uh, into an iterator or, and many capabilities. Box is one of the other um, most used one. What did I do? Uh, <laughs> Box is one of the most uh, used smart pointers as well, which basically allocates the given thing you give it on the heap and gives you a pointer that references that value. Um, it's mostly used when um, you want to wrap so, so many times I use it for uh, for these situations mostly when when you have an unsized value so for example different implementations of a trait implementations of a trait are unsized you cannot um, so for example if you if you are writing a function that can get multiple or different types um, or, or or have a, a better example would be to if you have a vector of implementations of a trait. You cannot do this in Rust by default because unless they are all the same type underneath, the compiler cannot guess the size of each element because they can be different things. So imagine you have two structs that implement one trait. You cannot um, have a vector that holds both of them. In these situations, or situations that, for example, for recursive types, so for example, for a linked list. A linked list, it's basically a node, a node type that has, uh, imagine it like a struct. It's a struct that with two fields, one is a data, and the other one is a reference, um, not necessarily the reference, it's the data, or it's, it's the next node. You cannot do this in Rust because it's a recursive data structure and compiler cannot guess the size of a node because it's recursive. You cannot guess it unless you know the value. So in these situations, you use a box. So box gives you a sized value and you can wrap an unsized value into a sized value. RC is one of the cool ones. So RC is a single threaded pointer or reference that is uh, reference counted. So what it means, it, enable, it enables uh, multiple ownership in situations that um, we cannot determine an exclusive owner for our data. So imagine you have a, 
imagine you imagine a situation where you want to have you have sing single data a, s a single variable and you want to have multiple owners for it and for s for any reason you you cannot and compiler cannot determine the owner for that so so you cannot determine in your code you cannot you cannot under, uh, you cannot uh, specify it in your code that when um when each when each um, owner is done with the variable so the compiler cannot understand when to drop this variable so it can this code cannot compile but if you use an rc it will give you um, owner access multiple owner accesses for a single variable and um, every time uh, every time you pass it or you clone it basically by cloning an rc you get a new reference uh, you get a new reference to the data but also a counter inside the original one is increasing so and every time you drop one of those references it will inc decrement so when it reaches zero it will drop and rem remember that rc is not thread safe so you cannot pass it into uh, into different threads it will crash your code so there is also arc or atomic RC, which is basically the same thing as RC, but it's atomic. So it means that each increment and decrement of the reference counter is um, is atomic, so it can be passed into different threads. So basically, it's the thread safe RC, thread safe, thread safe version of the RC. And one of the examples of using ARC is inside web servers. So for example, if you have used Rocket or I think Actix, um, if you want to pass some kind of state into your handlers, imagine you have a counter. You just want to count um, how many users visited, for example, this link. If you want to have that, you need to have some kind of arc over your variable because you cannot copy an integer safely. Uh, you cannot copy the integer um, to have multiple owners of it of that of course you need a mutex as well for that so it's a actually a really popular pattern to do something like uh, arc mutex of something it's actually a really po popular pattern in web servers so you basically have a mutex is a basically a log around some data and then you have an arc which makes it makes this variable possible to pa be passed around different threads and different functions and all of them are owners of that and finally we have refs so refs are basically the way you can uh, fool the compiler and basically make it not apply borrow checking rules at compile time so why it's uh, I mean most most of Rust uh, popularity is coming from being a safe language. So why we should we want to do this? There are situations that you need um, that you need to have a mutable reference to. Sorry for the disruption. So there are uh, times that you want to have a m mutable reference to an immutable variable. And there are examples of that in Rust book as well. But the ba basic thing is, uh, for example, for times that you are implementing a trait that has an immutable receiver, but inside your implementation, you need the mutable reference. So in those times, you can have a ref, which basically works for immutable reference, for immutable definitions, but actually inside you can borrow it as mutable. So basically, if you wrap something inside a ref, and we will see the example, if you wrap something inside a ref, you can borrow it as, Im as mutable, even if it's not de defined as mutable. So let's take a look at actually at this, because this is the, probably the most vague one in these um, four. So imagine we have an integer then we create a ref cell out of it. So this code works, right? We are borrowing. These are same as we do this, right? We can have as many uh, uh, immutable references. So re you remember the rules of the compiler of the Rust. So you have infinite number of immutable references or one mutable reference. So 
this works, but let's add this line. So I'm now borrowing this as a mutable. So A is now, this is A, this A mute is basically a reference to A, which is mutable. And you see there is no errors or anything in this code, right? So compilers is telling us, okay, that's, that is okay, you can compile it, but let's actually try to run it. It will crash the compiler and it says, okay, you already mutably borrowed. And the error is probably happening in this line, yes. So in the line eight, I'm trying to borrow something which is already mutably borrowed, right? So I cannot do this. And so, and you see the compiler cannot determine this and this is happening completely in runtime. So, so that is it for refs as well. So f for summary of this, I took this text from Rust book, which was a good summary, I think. So RC enables multiple owners for the same data, we know. Box and ref cell have single owners, or basically they apply the same compiler, uh, th so the compiler rules apply to them, but the ref cell, I all the rules for ref cell is applied during the runtime, not the compile time. So this is the difference between box and RC, of uh, box and ref cell. Uh, box is compile time, um, checked and ref cell is runtime checked. Box allows immutable or mutable borrows. Check that compile time. Okay. RC allows only immutable borrows. Check that compile time. Right. So RC just allows immutable borrows. And ref cell allows immutable or mutable borrows. Check at runtime. Also, ref cell allows mutable borrows checked at runtime. You cannot. You can mutate the value inside ref cell even when the ref cell is immutable. So this is what we saw in here. So you see that A is immutable. We didn't define this. I, I mean, I, 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 cannot, I cannot do this. This will not compile. This will give me an error because it says, okay, A is not mutable. You need to make this mutable to work. But you see, I can, I can get a mutable borrow in here and I can then dereference it and do anything I want with it. So that is basically it for different pointers in Rust. If you like this content and you want me to continue doing this content, like of uh, this kind of content, please like this video and subscribe. And you can contact me in YouTube um, comments, in Twitter, and in mail. So that is it for this video. And until the next video, goodbye.